Separate We're good? Okay. Good morning, Aquinas. Today is November 1st, 2021, and please stand for morning prayer and pledge. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is All Saints Day, for which we have a Mass for today, so here is a prayer for this special day. Bless the many parted souls who live their lives with grace. Bless the saints in heaven gathered in that special place. May we tell their stories and remember all the ways they lived their faith and spent their days. There is glory and reward, even if at first there is strife. O oh, blessed saints, you help us see a path that's to eternal life. May we always hold them dear and know their life and place. May we, may we know their inspiration and aspire to their grace. Amen. Let us pray for healing in our community and our world, for our faithful departed, for all those intentions we hold in our hearts and those written in our book of intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Because it is All Saints Day, each Kumbaya throughout November, we will be highlighting a saint and celebrating the ethnic and racial diversity of the church by providing some background on them. Today we are highlighting Saint Juan Diego. Juan Diego and his wife, Maria Lucia, converts, walk 14 miles to religious instructions and mass every Saturday and Sunday. On December 9, 1531, when Juan was a 57-year-old widower, he was walking to mass. A beautiful lady dressed as an Aztec appeared. She told him she was the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of the true God. She desired to have a shrine there at Tepeyac Hill so that she could show her love for people. She said, ask for my help. Here I will listen to people's prayers and I will help them. Mary asked Juan to tell the bishop of her desire. The bishop didn't believe him, so Juan returned to the lady and suggested she send a better speaker. Mary told Juan that she chose him for this work and that she would bless him for helping her. Juan revisited the bishop. This time, the bishop told him to ask this lady for a sign that she was the mother of God. When Juan did, Mary told him to return the next day for a sign. The same day, Juan's uncle Bernardio became ill, and Juan stayed home to care for him. When his uncle was dying, Juan went for a priest. On the way, he met the Holy Virgin. He apologized for not meeting her the day before. Mary replied, Now listen to me. Do not let anything bother you, and do not be afraid of any illness, pain, or accident. Am I not here, your mother? Are you not under my shadow and protection? What more could you want? Don't worry about your uncle. He is well already. Mary then sent Juan to the top of the hill to gather the flowers growing there. Juan knew that nothing grew on that rocky hill, let alone in winter. However, he did as the lady said. Juan found gorgeous roses. He picked them up and brought them to Mary, who arranged them in his clock that Maria Lucia had made from cactus fibers. Mary told Juan to take them to the bishop. When the bishop saw Juan, he asked what he had in his tilma. Juan opened it, letting the roses fall. Imagine the bishop surprised at seeing roses in winter, yet he saw an even greater miracle. On Juan's cloak, a beautiful life-size image began to appear. Juan gasped. It was his lady. The bishop cried out, the Immaculate. Then he knelt and with tears asked the Blessed Mother's pardon for not believing Juan. On that same day, Mary appeared to Juan's uncle and cured him. Uncle Bernardino went to the bishop and told how he had been cured. Juan Diego remained poor, simple, humble, and devoted to the Eucharist. He spent the next 17 years traveling throughout central Mexico, bringing others to the faith and delivering Guadalupe's message that Mary loves us and wants to help us. Juan Diego was beatified in 1990 and canonized in 2002. Please join me in the glory be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. St. Basil, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good morning, Aquinas. How are all of you? This, there's no one here. Uh, okay, welcome to the Way Too Early Early Show with Luke Sharon and Kenzie Murphy. Uh, I'm looking forward to a new month at the Aquinas Institute. October is in the past, time for a fresh start in November. So anyways, we have a great show planned for you today, so let's get right into it. Kenzie, could you hit us with some recent sports news? Of course. So this past Friday, our football team won their first sectionals game against Fairport 40-21, to so congratulations to them. And on Saturday, our cheer team competed at sectionals at RET and finished in second place. The varsity volleyball team ended one of the best seasons in school history on Saturday with a tough three-set loss to Newark in the Class B best seasons in school. 
oh, sorry, Class V sectionals. The team finished 18 to two, which is the best season since the program won the sectional title in 2010. Congratulations to our seniors, Maddie Granger, Sophie Rates, Kylie Verhagen, and Taylor Winheim on outstanding careers and setting the program up for future success. Finally, cross country had their PPL championship over the weekend. Jake Weeper was the top varsity finisher and Blake Boone won the boys modified. Race with an undefeated season, along with Corey Goodwin in 10th place and Megan Weeper in second place in the girls mod race. Congratulations. All right, thank you. Uh, now for some quick announcements. On Wednesday, November 3rd at 3.30 p.m. in the cafeteria, there will be a mandatory preseason girls basketball meeting for any girl interested in playing modified JV or varsity girls basketball. All girls that are interested in girls basketball should register on family ID ASAP. Also, women's leadership will be meeting tomorrow, November 2nd. There will be a speaker, so do not be late and do not buy your lunch. We will have food if you forget to bring a lunch. Great, so some more announcements. Peer Ministry is collecting food items for Thanksgiving baskets now. Homerooms have lists of your specific food item along with a collection box. If your homeroom gets a majority of people to bring in food by next Wednesday, November 10th, you will get a dress down. Please help these hungry families to give them the best Thanksgiving possible. Attention winter athletes. Please be sure to recall on Family ID ASAP. It is important for athletes still participating in fall sports to recall now for the first winter season as well. Practices start soon and you want to be eligible to participate on the first day. All right, now real quick, we have the lunches for the week up on the screen, so take a look. Uh, and then we have the birthdays for the week up on the screen as well. Get those birthdays. Y'all can read fast. Okay, now finally we are going to have Mrs. Barber and Mr. White come up and tell us a bit about the middle school musical and auditions for that. Hello, I'm Mrs. Barber. I'm Mr. White. And we are the co-directors for the middle school musical this year, which will be happening in February. And we are gearing up for auditions. So if you are interested in being in the cast, if you are in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, then you should look forward to signing up for an audition soon. I'm going to be posting all of the paperwork, the information packet, the permission form, all that stuff on the board outside my room, which is AC21. It's on the second floor of the Art Center. Um, if, you have, if you are in sixth grade and you have either me or Mrs. Easton for your art class right now, you know exactly where that bulletin board is. Um, and I'm gonna be posting that by the end of the day today, so you can start signing up then. Uh, you're, you have two weeks to sign up because auditions are in two weeks. You wanna tell them the dates? Sure. Uh, the dates are Wednesday, November 16, and Thursday, November 17, uh, with everybody who auditions coming to the cast meeting Friday, November 19. Please sign up for one audition slot, and do be prepared to come to the cast meeting on Friday, because we will expect most, if not all, auditionees to attend that meeting. So if you're interested in being in the cast, that's a brief overview. We're not going to take too much of your time right now. Uh, but we are going to be coming around to classrooms, so we're going to be coming around to Flexes this Friday for 7th and 8th graders to answer any questions that you have. And uh, we'll be coming around also to Enrichment for 6th grade this Friday. So at that time, we'll get a chance to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. If you have questions or need help signing up, um, you can ask them then. Uh, you can also always email either one of us or send us an ensuite message or find us in the hallways and we'd be happy to answer your questions. So we hope to see a lot of you at auditions because it's going to be a really fun show. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, looks like we're just about wrapping up. If you want to be interviewed on Kumbaya, talk to me or Lucas to be able to talk about sports, clubs, events, or anything else. All right, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's broadcast of the Way Too Early Early Show with Lucas Sharon and Kenzie Murphy. Stay safe and healthy, and see you next week.